This has been a pretty tough review to make. There is so much to discuss, for one thing. I still have some reservations, and I still believe that this game has enormous potential. Now, some of you might remember or might have seen some of my previews and reviews for this game. You can still read it on Steam, or you can watch those videos on my YouTube channel. But other than being, initially at least, totally, totally wowed and completely consumed by the awesome ocean experience provided by this game, in those reviews and videos, I also highlighted some negative points and stuff that I felt needed to be worked on. Now, if you go to Steam and look at the reviews on there right now, you will see that there are many mixed reviews. That's despite most people saying that they would actually like to offer a neutral review feedback, something which Steam still, for whatever reason, do not offer. The complaints are often the same. Lack of content, lack of realism, and no real challenge. It's far too easy to complete the game, and once you do, there is no replayability. Nobody really seems to dislike this title. I certainly don't dislike this title. But everybody agrees, I think, that it just falls short of expectations, of its own capability, of its own potential. In addition to my review, I also recorded a lot of gameplay footage. Now, a number of you really enjoyed watching the series, and some of you keep asking for me to return it to the channel. The problem is for me that, despite all of the amazing potential in Fishing Baron C, they've ultimately decided to dumb the game down. Make it easier for the masses to play, but I would argue that they don't fully enjoy it as a result. For me, Fishing Baron C was all about the contrast between the calm and the power of the ocean. It was about braving those perilous conditions in a variety of nicely modelled boats and ships. It was about enjoying the relatively limited but at least existing career, taking on the dangers and the challenges that sea fishing and trawling ultimately bring. Unfortunately, Fishing Barrett Sea decided to remove almost everything that I really liked most about the game in order to make it easier to play to accommodate younger players, perhaps. For example, they turned off uh, bad weather near the shore, so within two kilometers of the port, of any port, you are guaranteed calm waters. Now, one of my all-time best experiences in Fishing Barrent Sea was trying to get back to the port in the first ship, which is called the Borg, and I was running against the tide. I had a, I had a fully laden boat, and I was running perilously low on fuel. Having to time and adjust the boat's direction in order to effectively surf the waves in order to get back into port was just brilliant. But they turned that off, and that really disappointed me. And they've done many things like this. Uh, they automated the ship speeds when you're dropping nets. This used to be something you had to do manually, and if you were going too fast, you'd destroy the net. So now they've removed the likelihood of damaging or destroying your very expensive nets, and the ergo, the challenge and the fun has kind of evaporated for me. There are numerous other disappointing changes which move the game further away from the simulation that I was really hoping the game was going to be, and what I wanted it to grow into and further towards this arcade, easy to play kind of experience. Looking at the reviews on Steam, I honestly think that they made the big mistake here. By appeasing those with short attention spans, they have effectively disengaged all of the simulation fans at the same time. They're the people who would consistently and substantially support and promote Fishing Baron C, but by dumbing it down for those with the short attention spans, yeah, okay, fine, more people bought the game, perhaps, more people have played the game, but they've all completed it very quickly, and now they've moved on. They've had their fix, and now they're not interested anymore. Eventually, I just found that the whole experience was far too easy, it ended up being mundane. Watching other YouTubers ranking up and unlocking the biggest and best boats really quickly just kind of trashed and ruined the whole experience and took away all of the realism that the game had for me. The way I look at it is that any sea-based title needs to prioritize the following three things. In, in my humble opinion, you may not agree with this, and that's okay if you don't. First of all, obviously, you need to have boats and ships. Now, we all agree that the ships are very nicely modeled, although a little bit simple and dumbed down, 
there's not too much interactive stuff and there's a lot of eye candy that doesn't really do anything and let's be honest the physics were way way off and they still are to be honest but they have had a lick of paint they have been expanded and now they look like they might well become fully involved and fully encompassing simulation vessels but i think it's going to take a little while before that really really uh, becomes a realization then there's the ocean the waves and the atmosphere now let's be honest Fishing Barrancy absolutely have nailed buoyancy. Okay, sure, the ships need a little bit tweaking, but otherwise, this part of the game is absolutely awesome. The sea itself looks amazing, and the Aurora Boralis, well, they've just nailed that, absolutely. And this is what really first captured my imagination with this game. I would like to see some much bigger waves and stronger winds, but otherwise, the whole sea dynamic and the way that it works and the way that it looks for me is absolutely spot on now the final thing and this is where fishing barrancy really has a, a gaping hole where they've really missed the mark and it's the danger and the challenges that exist when you take on the ocean you cannot sink boats this is a massive mistake ship simulator extremes that was like 10 years ago they managed this and they did it really well considering the limitations that they had all the way back then. Also, there are no mechanical issues to contend with. Every fishing show is plagued by mechanical failure and to not have it in the game just screams out as being a missed opportunity. And I also find that it's far too easy to find and catch fish. Eventually this just becomes boring and you lack that excitement when you actually get a big catch. All fishing shows have big, fat, smiley faces when they get a decent haul. Prior to that, they're angry, they're miserable, they're fighting with each other, they're angry and stressed out. Then they get that big catch that they've all been hoping for and everyone's happy, big, fat smiles all around. Everyone knows they're going to get a decent payday. That is missing in Fishing Barrent Sea because that happens pretty much every single time. It's almost impossible not to get a decent catch in this game. Now... A while back, there was a lot of talk around having an arcade and a simulation mode. As yet, there is no simulation mode. I've been holding out for this to materialise, and I still hope that it does. I mean, this game is absolutely perfectly placed to become a simulation game. But, because it's so arcadey and it's so easy, this game has lost my attention. And it will do until that actually materialises. What would I like to see what areas would i like to see this game really focus on well some of the key areas where this game could really see some major improvements and expansion for one allowing us to sit down on one of the many seats that are now available perhaps being able to use the kitchen maybe even have a sleep and a hunger bar with which to contend with make the crew stand in the kitchen and when they're cooking, actually be in the kitchen, and when they're sleeping or resting, actually be in there, sat down, reading a book, listening to some music. Something like that would absolutely blow the immersion into a new hemisphere. I would like to see the weather changing more than once a day. At midnight, it changes to whatever the weather is going to be tomorrow. I'd like to see it be more dynamic. Maybe, say... On a Tuesday, the weather is going to be between 10 and 15 knots and then vary the weather, you know, hour to hour, maybe go up by one degree or down by one degree and maybe sometimes even go over 15 miles per hour in terms of wind and get, get the waves being a little bit bigger than previously expected. All this kind of stuff adds to the immersion and the realism element and I'd love to see that implemented. I think everything is in place for that to already be done. And why they haven't done it yet, I don't know. But I'm hoping in the future that the weather system will become more dynamic than it currently is. And I'd also like, well, a simulation element, a hardcore element where you don't automate anything. Perhaps do give us autopilot as an optional purchasable upgrade. And then we can choose to either turn it on or not. But... I don't want my speed adjustment to be automatic. I want to be punished for poor handling with perhaps even mechanical and equipment malfunctions thrown in to boot. 
I'd like to have radio comms so that you can contact ports in advance so that you can check what price they're selling fish at. So you know which is the best port for you to go and drop your fish off at and get the best prices. The boat physics are significantly off. I mean, they're way off at the moment. They stop so quickly. They have no feeling of weight to them. They don't slide or glide through the sea the way that they should. They either are totally encompassed by the water or they just glide over the top of it. The physics definitely need to be looked at. The buoyancy system seems to be really nice and really good, but the whole animation, I mean, there's no sp spray on the windows. There's no real splash audio when it hits down into a, into a big wave. The, um, the breakwater for me is really poor i mean when you look at that in comparison to how amazing the rest of the game is it really stands out as a as a a weak feature for me so definitely this whole area needs to be addressed in terms of physics obviously we want to be able to capsize a ship if we're treating it badly and in worst case scenarios we want to sink the damn thing we want to see the animation of the ship sinking and a lot of the bigger boats have these emergency uh, life rafts on board. Now, having the ability to offload those into the sea and then jump in those, you know, not just in emergencies, but just for the sake of it. Maybe you want to, I don't know, maybe you want to go into port and grab some stuff, but you don't want to take the boys off the boat. So you could sit outside port whilst they're processing the fish. You jump in the little boat and you go in and you buy some new hooks for your lines or repair the nets or whatever these are all aspects of the game which could be included and would massively improve the immersion element and realism element for me but uh will we see it i don't know for sure um another thing along pretty much the same line really i would like to be able to dock my ship manually and what would be absolutely fantastic and i think everybody who plays this game would be so excited to have multiplayer in the game. I mean, my goodness, if you had multiplayer in the game and you could work as a crew and you could dock the ship manually and you had to repair things when they broke whilst you're out at sea, how incredible an experience would this game be? But obviously, this is vastly, vastly expanded from the original idea of the game and the amount of work that that would involve would be gargantuan. But doesn't alter the fact that we wouldn't desperately like to see it available. In addition to that, the option now that we have AI shipping lanes, could it be possible to have a multiple boats and have AI crews running your boat? So include a whole business aspect. If you were going to do that, though, eventually at some point you would like to see some competitors against you you'd like to see dynamic fluctuating fish prices maybe an online scoreboard and a leaderboard is okay for some but for me a business element and having competitors to compete against and expanding your business and having multiple ships sailing at the time having to deal with capsizes deaths damage all that kind of stuff that would really make this game have the longevity which many including myself feel that this game currently lacks and although there is a quote unquote career aspect to the game wouldn't it be fantastic if the career started with you literally getting a job on a boat you're responsible for gutting fish then when you're good enough at that you can start hauling in the lines, then the nets, then maybe do some cooking, and then work your way up to buying your own boat and becoming your own captain. Would, wouldn't that be an exceptional experience in terms of career? I think it would make a huge difference to the game. Obviously, first person needs some addressing. I think it needs better navigation. I think the, uh, the display boards in the control deck need to become dynamic and actually do something rather than being static images that don't do anything at all this is a lot of work i'm not i'm not in any way suggesting that they could do this overnight these are just features i'd love to see in the future 
At this point in time, I find that the boys are still almost all but completely invisible, not helped in any way, shape or form by the fact that the lighting in this game is an absolute shocker. I mean, it's so bad, it's ridiculous. If you put your game into night view and turn all the lights on on the ship, you'll notice that other than the searchlight, none of the lights actually light anything up other than those inside, which are too bright and then mean you can't see the dials, etc. So lighting in this game is an absolute mess. There's no way of pretending that it isn't. It needs addressing, it needs fixing. Now, you know, I understand that you need to sell DLCs in order to cover the development costs. And in November, we have crab fishing DLC coming, but I just feel like nobody or not enough people are going to be buying these DLCs and really investing in the game until we see some of these issues and wishes being addressed. We definitely, or I definitely, and many people like me definitely want this game to be more simulation oriented. And uh, we, would, we would have waited a very, very, very long time to have an engine room which doesn't really do anything maybe it's an example of what's coming in the future maybe the plans are to animate the crew maybe the plans are to have engines which fail and need to be maintained and improved and upgraded and repaired whilst at sea maybe this is all part of the big major plan but if it's just aesthetic improvements then i think we can do without them what we do need is spray on the windscreen better physics for the ships ships which capsize and sink and a business element that would make this game a hundred percent long-term investment viable in my humble opinion hey guys thank you so much for watching this video today i really appreciate you coming along and taking the time to do that i want to say a big thank you to each and every one of you who watched this video today special big thank you to our patreons and supporters on twitch but everybody who comes and watches you all count you are all part of this and i thank you so much if you hit that like button i will like you twice as much even more than that perhaps it is for you guys that i make these videos so it matters to me a huge amount if you enjoy watching them and if you don't you need to tell me so thanks for watching take care of yourselves until next time goodbye for now